Okay, sir. Good evening. Today we are continuing on with the, the first chapter of PMBOK, almost at the lagging edge. Uh, we covered yesterday in the last lecture a little bit about project-based organization, which probably Adil Sahib have not attended. Uh, that was not much. I'll just revise it a bit. But the main topic today is organizational governance and then the business value. After that, a little bit about the roles of the project management and we can finish off with this topic. Uh, we can move on to then the next chapter. Uh, about the project-based organization, let me take you a few slides back. Uh, I'll just introduce you what this project-based organization is. Project-based organization refer to various organizational forms that create temporary systems for carrying out their work. Now, this is a very important thing to say. People will definitely confuse project-based organizations with projectized organization. Projectized organization is a fully formed organization which is completely dedicated to project management. So, they are only doing projects and they have just the project managers under the main head and every project manager has got dedicated team now that is an organizational structure project based organization is not an organizational structure this is a temporary structure which can be adopted by any kind of organization even a functional organization can be project based can be you know matrix organization can also have pbo pbo can exist anywhere but within a PBO, it is a small little network. Uh, previously, we used to call it uh, for, uh, some teams. I, I don't exactly remember the word, uh, but kind of, you know, you have an assignment and that assignment is time bound. And within your functional organization or whatever organization you are running, you set up a separate team to do that separate job for some time, a short period of time. Normally that is, uh, uh, I don't remember it, what kind of things. It used to you know, be in there in second, third edition of PMB, okay? And we practically used to use that, used to have those kind of teams in normal organization. But I'm skipping that name. But now it is called project-based organization. Use of project-based organization may diminish the hierarchy and bureaucracy inside the organization. In a functional organization, naturally you are answerable to your boss and all that, you know, bureaucratic structure. Uh, this gets you out of that temporarily and puts you in a safe zone where you can perform that specific duty in a group. So people are put together. So they, within that group, that temporary group, they are actually using all the project management practices. So, that takes is its precedence from the principles of project management and that job is done according to a small little project. <coughs> PBOs conduct the majority of their work as projects, as I said, and are provide project rather than functional approaches. So within that sphere, they are not using functional approaches because functional approaches is operation, not operational approaches, but Essentially, they are using the methods and principles and concept of project management within that world. PBO can refer to either an entire organization, an entire organization can be a PBO, or a network can be a PBO, a small little network within the organization. So, um, largest it could be, it could be the whole organization. Temporarily, it becomes a PBO, performs a duty, and then gets back into its old structure or whatever. Like you see, uh, sometimes uh, even in army we have the whole battalion sent to flood duties or something like that so uh, they do not perform their own duties at that time and they are temporarily on a mission so after that they get back to their own roles so this is a temporary project based organization it is also possible that some large pbos have functional support areas or that the pbo is nested within subsidiaries are divisions of a larger corporation. Again, typical example of an army. You know, a larger organization assigns you on this duty and you do that. So, and it can have its own, you know, what we call it uh, 
self accounting unit so this could be a self accounting unit it could have its own uh, operational support administration and food and all that so all those things might be so pbo is uh, that kind of a concept so do not confuse it with the organizational structure it is not organizational structure it is a temporary structure which we adopt or on and off so that was as far as the pbo went and that was the only thing we discussed in the last lecture organizational governance uh, naturally we probably did talk about it earlier also a little bit organizational governance is if you want to understand that you must understand what is what is governance in general we have been listening to the dialogues like good governance and bad governance you know every tom dick and harry uh, has the audacity to talk about good and bad governance but they don't know what the governance really means so uh, i am referring to various politicians who, who themselves do not have any governance mechanism and they are calling everybody else is bad governance or good governance what is governance basically they are the governance they are the creators of the governance who are abusing governance and there is no governance that's why the systems do not work so what is governance governance is kind of a authoritative Uh, setting up of rules and regulation a system putting a system in place naturally if you want to put a system in place put it in a discipline you must have to establish certain policies and procedures policies and procedures are lighter word governance is command governance is kind of uh, 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 regulation rather uh, regulation is still a softer word it is law governance gives you the law so those people who are sitting at the hem of the affairs who decide the fate of the organizations they decide how they want to govern the, this organization there are two concepts one is governance of an organization and one is management of an organization governance is a top top level people they think about how to run this and uh, naturally they cannot run each and every part of the organization by themselves so for that they hire managers but those managers are you know their strings are in the governance so how they governed by they are governed by the governors the governing body now this governing body has control but no micromanagement this is interesting governance a good governance is no micromanagement and still exercising a beautiful control in which nothing falls out of place that means you can ensure that your managers are performing well how do you know sitting at a governance level the good governance is that sitting up there how can you control everything to the dot and as i said it does not mean that you go inside yourself and start micromanaging because then you would be performing the duty of a manager and you are not a manager you are in the governance body so if you are developing those rules how would you develop them so the person sitting up there normally assesses whatever his subordinates are doing naturally he gives them the rules and but he needs to have assurance mechanism that people are working as they should according to the laws policies procedures how would he know that he cannot have details of each and every report so generally he establishes certain key performance indicators for example an organization in which there is a high turnover rate indicates there is something wrong in organization where people are not happy indicates there is something wrong so such like key performance indicators could indicate some like such like things naturally people hire consultants for them to establish these kpis or whatever or if the uh, governing body itself so good and strong they can establish it themselves but generally governance can only work with two other parts one is a policing mechanism and the other is a judging mechanism so 
governance only makes the rules laws and these laws are implemented on people in the organization through the managers and they have to ensure that everything passes through a proper check if it is if if there those laws and regulations are applied and everything passes through the proper check and somebody you know catches them doing something wrong then they should be punished or rewarded whatever they have done for so there has to be a system of justice there has to be a system of policing and that will ensure the, the whole triangle the top level governance makers the policing mechanism and the judiciary these three things will ensure good governance this is a triangle of good governance so uh, you can look at it from from a nation's point of view from an organization's point of view and you can inherit it down at any level Pro project governance is also there program governance is also there okay like in uh, uh, in our country we have got a president and a prime minister so essentially speaking every lower level is a managerial level. ever upper, every upper level is a governance level whatever governance we got so classically speaking president is the governance and prime minister is the management now look at it from another point of view let's see prime minister is the governance and the bureaucracy is the management let's go down a bit there is a department say uh, ministry of interior so ministry of interior will have a, a governance mechanism in itself i'm not talking about the minister i'm talking about the top level management they establish within their ministry their own governance mechanism which has to be if it has to run effectively which has to be ensured so the people under them will be governed by those who now every successive level of governance inherits the basic governance principles from top there if it is you are a organization in pakistan the governance rules and regulations of the country are governing the country and are inherent to your organization as well whether it is a private sector organization or a public sector organization some governance mechanism inherits into it you like you know you can't murder anybody in your organization it's against the law rather it is not only your country's law it is international law so that thing all, all those things have inherited into your system but specific to your system you develop your own governance structure on top which abides by the upper all upper governance levels and uh, uh, defines the specifics about the system you are talking about so that means the organizational governance applies to the organization but what where i am leading you to is within organization there could be sub department every department can have its own governance definitely aligned with the overall organizational governance similarly if i look at the organizational project management in organizational project management portfolio governance might be there program governance might be there rather is there always there and every project has its own governance mechanism in a typical uh, 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 aap na uncha bol lijiye in a typical corporate organization a corporate mm -hmm. uh, what are the designations uh, used for the top level governing body like the president of the company um actually we we call them the governance governance board normally uh, large private Funds they have a governance committee or governance board. Governance board not only decides but they strategize, and when they strategize, naturally they have some governing principle. So first they have to create a governance structure, and then they have to you know dish out the duties downwards. So that the governance is necessary. Without governance, you would you know you may have a good strategy, you may have a good direction you may have a good vision like our country but we may have lot many good documentations going on but our governance mechanism is not good 
because uh, there, there is no connection between the three triangles. You know, if you call, uh, talk about corruption, we uh, polluted at all three levels. So, there's no fun in having good laws. You see, this is exactly happening. They don't make good laws because they will be caught. Right? So, governance is bad. Governance is corrupt. Police does not catch because, uh, you know, they, they can't. Uh, yeah, that, that also. But they also have to put in their share in corruption. Right? Same goes for the judiciary. So, all three things are polluted in how good governance can be there. You can't blame on the previous person or the person coming next to next to you. You're, if there is a corrupt system, then it is a corrupt system. It cannot, you can't say it is a good governance and this corner, but bad governance at that corner. It's not, not like that. Uh, good governance create karna It's not a big deal at all. It's just the matter of setting on the job. We do not set on that job of correcting the things. You see, there are a lot of many things you study here which are so simple, so simple to apply. And uh, probably uh, otherwise it's not a big deal. I think you have some solutions. Everybody has some solutions. So if you are honest and true to the cause, you will develop a solution, definitely. Just because they are corrupt people, they don't want to correct it. Ultimately, it's very common. At what cost? Or then after that, what ultimately what the rest of the society will be done? So you have to prioritize the thing. You have to you know do things like that. And then law is for all. Law create करें और law create करते हुए आप उसमें से कुछ ऐसे छोड़ दें. Across the board apply करें और जालिम ओके apply करें तो उसके बाद. This is exactly what is required. <coughs> उसमें फिर वो मेहरबानी नहीं होनी चाहिए ना ये मेरा पुत्र है ये मेरा मामला है और ये ये है वो वो चीजें खराब करते हैं एनीवेज तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल गवर्नेंस जो है आई होप यू जनरली गेट द आईडिया बिकॉज़ इसी आईडिया को वी हैव टू गेट इट डाउन टू प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड प्रोग्राम्स एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट दिस इज इनहेरिटेड डाउन टू बट नेचुरली एवरी गवर्नेंस लेवल विल डिस्क्राइब सम सम ऑफ इट ओन पिक्युलैरिटीज अ प्रोजेक्ट विल डिफाइन प्रोजेक्ट पिक्युलैरिटीज एंड डेफिनेटली under the subordination of the bigger governance mechanism. If it is under program governance, the program governance is the umbrella under which the project governance will be established. <coughs> and program <coughs> is existing under the organization governance. <coughs> so projects and programs are undertaken to achieve strategic business outcomes. This we know. Many organizations now adopt formal organizational governance to processes and procedures. <coughs> This is not common and this should be developed. This hierarchy should travel down to the lowest level. Like, you know, you have got, as, as I just said, uh, there's a prime minister and, you know, all that system. Then, even in uh, in a province, in place of president, you have a governor. In place of prime minister, you have a chief minister. So, one governance level is this. Then, chief minister and all his ministries. So another governance level. So it inherits downwards. So wherever you are in any country, you are under some governance mechanism. And if that is a good system, that good system is be inherited into your system. It's a proper check and balance system. You start a business in USA. What will happen? Will you be able to do all these corruptions which you will do here when you are in Pakistan starting the same business? You won't be able to because the check and balance system is immaculate. They'll not let you move right or left. You have to pay your taxes and you have to do everything. So ultimately, you know what I can, what is the exactly. Whenever you have to direct link with the consumer, exactly. you have to get a license to operate in that, that kind of a business. Exactly. So that is just to do the good governance at a higher level, which is forcing you to run your business under your own governance mechanism, naturally under the whole thing. So, 
this is very good if you have that thing and you consider that umbrella and remain under that umbrella and elaborate further on your governance mechanism if you talk about project what do you need to govern in a project naturally project concepts so the phases have been made not made if not made why not made so that kind of thing the whole mechanism should transfer downward and project management methodology and everything would be decided from there we have uh, did we talk about the organizational process assets not yet okay. we'll talk about that later so those things are not rules those things will be the data coming from various sources but governance is going to bound with commons so we, we will create the governance structure in project as well. organizational governance criteria can impose constraints on the project organizational governance says that all buildings in pakistan in islamabad must be earthquake proof or to that level a specific level. rector scale whatever so no matter what your organization is you are doing something in in islamabad you have to abide by that governance structure so that may constrain your project because otherwise you put making more money in the project because these things were not to be done but now per force per law you have to do that so they will constrain your project but at the same time that is a requirement from the organizational governance that we have to abide by the upper laws particularly if the project delivers a service which will be subject to the to strict organizational governance i, I think there was an example also yeah you see if an organization has adopted policies in support of sustainability practices i give you example of earthquake he says your organizational governance mechanism says that whatever you do must be sustainable sustainable practices are promoted and the project involves construction of a new office building that is your project and the, your project does not have in itself any sustainability requirement the project manager should be aware because it is an organizational governance aware of sustainability requirements related to building construction and apply that so this is not the project requirement but this is a imposition this is a restriction this could be a constraint so we have to abide, abide by that. so project success may be judged on the basis of how well the resultant product or service supports organizational governance it is important for project manager to be knowledgeable about corporate organizational governance policies and procedures pertaining to the subject matter of the product or service so that gives us a full view of what the organizational governance is now after having understood the governance let's talk about the strategy so governance is a discipline which has been imposed a law which has been put in place which is applicable which will be properly ensured now organizational strategy should provide guidance and direction to project manager organizational strategy shows me the direction and tells me follow me so whatever the organization does it is under that arrow under that direction it is moving that is exactly why we have been harping so much about you know project should be aligned with the organization strategy all the time projects should be working in the same direction it should not be working at a 180 degree different angle the objective of the project is right and the organization going up how is it possible is that means that project is not contributing towards the organization so this is important before even starting your project you must ensure that this is aligned with the organization strategy otherwise this has to be terminated or cancelled or its alignment have to be changed or correct especially when one consider that project exist to support organizational strategies project sponsor portfolio or program manager identifies alignments or potential conflicts between organizational strategies and project goals and then communicates these to the project manager if the goals of the project are in conflict with an established strategy organizational strategy project manager has to document and identify such conflicts as early as possible as soon as 
project comes in control of project manager the very first thing he does he looks up sees the direction and sees where am i heading if he is not heading in the right direction he has to realign it or he has to propose to his boss that sir where the hell are you going we are not following the organizational objective or we are not going in the according to the organization strategy uh, that is exactly my objection here that our government departments how the hell are they working do they know what is the direction of our country do they know what is the vision of our country are they really working towards that is there a organizational strategy or national strategy in front of us we are so unlucky a people that we do not have a vision we do not have a strategy and we how can you expect even if your organizations are immaculate even then where are they heading one is heading this direction one is heading that it's complete chaos and even i say even if everyone is very fine every organization is immaculate even then they will never achieve any tag there will be no small successes in this direction small successes in this direction and they can boost boast about it but at the same time uh, uh, we will not progress at all that is exactly our history and geography of sir ke sara this is our problem okay so whomsoever in the hierarchy project sponsor portfolio manager whatever they describe so when the project manager gets this job somebody who is given him this job he must also have seen that line so project sponsor project sponsor when gives this job to the project manager assigns him through a charter to the project manager he has to do the same alignment checking and to his satisfaction if he thinks that it is aligned naturally he does not have the in depth knowledge of what comes next but whatever little picture he has due to the feasibility of the business case he will check it and say oh looks like okay i am giving this job to the project manager and project manager then again he looks because now it is his baby he has been assigned to do this job if somebody assigns you to kill someone will you definitely not so we have to see if i, I have been given right order or wrong order and if it is a wrong order uh, i'm not saying uh, that you should state away refuse now there are two categories according to uh, professional ethics number one if it is a criminal activity which you have been you know asked to do then you can refuse and you can report if it is not a criminal activity if the laxity is a laziness or some some flaw then you can highlight that thing to your boss and tell him sir the way you are telling me to do this may cause harm to the organization because it is not aligned with the organization objective so please reconsider now he says i am your boss and i am the owner of the project let me do whatever i feel like so as as far as your duty is concerned you have full freedom so if it is not a criminal negligence it is just the matter of little a correction of approach uh, and your boss insists that his approach is to be followed let him follow his approach but you have you should document you should document whatever you you have objected and that should be put on the call and probably th this is something on which uh, people feel very offended if you put anything in writing then you know <laughs> the other guy will feel pinched because he is wrong it basically is wrong so he will feel pinched and you know that kind of thing but anyways whatever diplomatically or however you can handle it uh, there is a lot of psyche involved also you must have some you know psychological knowledge also how to convey your boss or to put him right and you know the best best part is which i i see if you feel there is something wrong you should put it up in front of your boss in such a way that he would feel that it was his idea to change this thing and put them right so this is another strategy how you how you deal with it but anyways the point is that these are the guys who actually at every level keep checking the alignment and if something is not in alignment the part is removed right there so 
your organization is always in good governance always aligned with your direction organization direction and you know everything goes fine if the goals of the project are in conflict with an established objective strategy pm has to document and identify as i said such conflicts as early as possible in the project sometimes development of an organizational strategy could be the goal of the project rather than a guiding principle now this is more interesting if you your the purpose of your project is to say business process reengineering you have are you have been you have been tasked to redesign the organization strategy what to do so if you are changing something you can't be governed by that thing under the same strategy how can you change the strategy therefore you need to have independence from that specific law or rule because you are trying to change it it is important for the project to spe specifically define what constraints an appropriate organizational strategy that will sustain the organization what what sorry what constitutes an appropriate organizational strategy that will sustain the organization so we they just don't have to fix the problem which bugs us immediately which comes in front rather we should give such a solution which would make the organization sustainable and probably we will talk more about it uh, there is a theory of constraints the very famous uh, dialogue about it is a chain is as strong as its weakest link we do not hunt down the weakest link we start from one corner of the chain and on second link we find oh this one is weaker this is the problem and we start fixing it which actually is not the whole problem that is just a little weak link the actual link is on say 23rd number we did not reach there and we said oh we solved the problem so our projects are normally designed like that so before you get into you know any correctional activity you must have a thorough analysis of the whole chain as if actual area of problem actual area the weakest link must be identified and resolved and that will systematically improve your system talk about more it later then is the business value now what is business value the all these terms looks very much alike organizational governance organizational strategy and all that but what is business value business value was never considered part of project management this is the first time they have started talking about it but this is very important because ultimately we do talk about <coughs> the cost benefit analysis we do talk about the feasibility and there we start considering those you know uh, which is more feasible for you so before you can start talking about that first tell me what is the worth of your business or your organization how do you assess the value of your organization what is the business value how do you assess that right assets and the intangibles are like Market value of your brand. Exactly. Market value so, of your. Exactly. So uh, uh, this is purely from a materialistic point of view. If I freeze your organization at this point in time, how much does it weigh? That is the point. So that weighs weigh weight comprises of two things. But one other is a tangible weight, which is physically these many chairs, these many stools, these many tables, these many equipment and. This is the worth of the whole organization. This is a tangible thing, but there is an intangible thing also. Like you have made a repo in the industry, and that sells. Although organization is right now worth this much, but you have provided a future value, which this repo will earn you more and more money in subsequent year. so what is this worth we call it pagdi like in, in our country so if a shop is running and you want to buy that shop a running shop 
they will ask for a bagri and that would be maybe even more expensive than the whole business but you are ready to pay because then you are taking the benefit of the location and whatever whatever the name and whatever so business value uh, shahan you are following me yes sir so business value is made up of two things and that is the tangibles and intangibles tangibles are naturally the monetary assets fixtures tool could see all that stakeholder equity and utilities all of these things thoroughly thoroughly you have to you know x-ray everything and take worth the present worth of everything not uh, the the uh, amount which you spent on buying those things. the present worth of everything that will give you the tangible worth of the whole organization then is a the tangible which is naturally as uh, adil sahab says goodwill brand recognition public benefit trademark all these things do matter so your net worth of the organization is the sum of tangibles and intangibles okay this is one point that you have now assessed and come up with a business value of your organization at this point in time what was your business value uh, 20 years back so you can travel back in history and see 20 years back where did you stand so how much have you progressed you were here now you are here how much have you progressed and what what are your intentions in future naturally if you are not increasing the business value then there is no fun in having this business close it down go home eat up this money and finish it off so uh, you the vision thing basically is associated with how much you want to grow how much value you want to set up you see people say businesses are all about money but we don't say that we will earn this much money we say we will do this job why because ultimately we will earn money so the business value how much business value do you want to increase what are you adding to the business value what are your targets so if you say that net worth of my business today is this much and i want to increase it to that amount which is maybe 10 times more than this in 5 years or 20 years or 30 years whatever that will prompt up your vision that will prompt your vision this is not your vision earning money is not your vision earning money is business value addition but whatever addition you want to see how you translate it that is your vision and then you achieve, to achieve that vision you make strategies and you you establish goals and your scope of business value is translated into short term medium term and long term long term purely uh, talking about the business value long term you want to reach here and what are your medium terms naturally if it is 25 years as i gave an example earlier also if it is 25 years long vision then probably every 5 year like in a country every 5 year would be your medium term target so you must have achieved those targets as if you can claim the last target if you are not meeting these five year target which is your mid term plan then you are going astray so after every five year there should be a correction applied you are short by this much in attaining the business value so next time you have to do more so this way you you ultimately achieve your long term target but your medium term target also is divided into short term targets like a yearly target so those yearly targets should add up to the medium term target and a correction applied every one year that means you will never get lost if you are rightly following up on every year and every mid term five year plan and ever uh, ultimately you are going to achieve your vision no questions asked definitely you are going to because you are applying corrections everywhere wherever you are falling short immediately you are deciding to put it right so what's wrong why are we not progressing this is the second problem we you know you remember uh, probably korea followed our five year plan 
and we correct sir korea korea and uh, what yes, did sir. you do and what did we do same same person prepared that thing and they just copied it because they were honest so they were the case of the ue emirates exactly uh, airlines yeah you told exactly the exactly. 22 airlines of this region exactly exactly so we are wrong somewhere we are wrong somewhere and all those places we were wrong they are indicated here it's not only project management we are talking about we are talking about the whole strategy at national or for that matter organizational level so probably we we have to take some lesson out of this thing and i uh, i personally feel that you are well equipped to address the strategic issues in your organization in whatever organization you go the only thing is keep your mind open open to the possibility these things probably uh, in, uh, in bits and pieces everybody does know but in in a, in a formal kya the na structured way you must train your mind and then you can apply it and that's how you, we why i am talking about it because i will now be telling you how project programs and portfolio contribute to business work that was the whole joke otherwise i am just giving you the definition of business value here ultimately aim is to improve the business value. exactly exactly also how do you manage your portfolio the audio program exactly the aim is to increase the business value. exactly you know the strategy thing and the vision although that is aligned with the business value but that is a dream stream and this is a money stream it's good if they should be aligned but if they are not aligned your dream stream will go on but you will not you may not be adding value so why not to you know put it in alignment to that also so you don't have to only go on the strategic you know projects we said projects al- alignment with this organization strategy if you are an organization are you really making business value addition or not maybe not so now it is going to prove to you how we can achieve the business value also with project program and portfolio value may be created through effective management of ongoing operation badi seedhi si pehli baat kar rahi hai simple value value creation is working honestly efficiently if you effectively if you manage the things you will get the value definitely through the effective use now oh, it's coming to the opm through the effective use of portfolio program and project management organizations will possess the ability to employ reliable established processes to meet strategic objectives and obtain greater value from their project investment ye hai jo link jo isko mila raha hai opm ke sath magar abhi bhi hazy hai ye kyunki ye both these teams will you know they have a tendency to bifurcate if they are not properly glued together the business value team and the dream team they have to be glued together otherwise you know things may go wrong all organizations are not business driven that is the problem that is where we we say oh, this is just a story theoretical things because we we are not business driven. we are a government organization why should we be talking about money this is a common objection coming from government institutes so money is no problem we are government organization what nonsense don't you have assets don't you have chairs and tables in your office were they not bought from the money were you not supposed to do something in this office and ultimately add the value now the addition of the value may not be material but the addition of value is the asset of the country if you say i am in education department and i have increased the education level of the people who are intangible level and ultimately that contributes to my nation and foreign uh, investment is coming in or whatever so, uh, however or or uh, no 
treasury is being filled out. So that was just due to you sitting in that office and adding the value. No matter it is a tangible value or intangible value, but you are contributing. So it says all organizations are not business driven, but all organizations conduct business related activities. This, I don't know why people do not understand, everyone, whether he is a businessman or not, is conducting business related activity. Even a government organization and NGOs focus on attaining business value for their activities. That is a lesson, the organization. The interesting part is, uh, even in, uh, in government, have you heard the term rules of business? They use the rules of business, they don't believe in, they don't believe in the business value. How is it possible? Is it a slang rules of business? Related rules of business of basic Exactly. So it's, it's not just a slang. This is, this is the rule of business. And you are running a business practically, whether it is camera or whatever, it is a business. And if not you, but maybe uh, Air Force is earning out of it or the country is earning out of it whomsoever, whether tangibly or intangibly. That is the business value you are adding. That is exactly what we are focusing on, the business value. Now how business value is realized? Successful business value realization begins with comprehensive strategic planning and management. This is creating the glue. Comprehensive. Sochi Samji. Organizational strategy can be expressed through the organization's mission and vision. This we also did talk about. First you have a vision, then you create a vision, then you establish the strategy, goals, objectives and all that. Including orientation to the markets, competition and other environmental factors. So you devise your strategy in our environment. Considering all the factors impacting you in different ways. Effective organization strategy provides defined direction for development and growth in addition to performance metrics for success. So two things we get. One, we get the direction of growth. Secondly, how to measure growth? How to measure success? How well we are performing? As I said, after every one year, how would you know how well we have done? So you must have established some metric. You must have some KPIs in place. Those KPIs will speak loud and clear that you have attained these targets. At strategic level, there is not a physical measurement how many, you know, cups of water you have drunk, how many bottles you have, you know, uh, sold. It is not counted on that. It is counted on, you know, maybe how much well-being you brought to the organization, how much assets you increased in the organization. So those things may matter and those will speak loud and clear whether our initiatives are going in some alignment or not. It is essential to use portfolio programs and project management techniques in order to bridge the gap between organization strategy and successful business value realization. This is, this is it. This OPM, organization project management, is the glue between these two things. It will bind them together. So this is business value realization. That's why it says Portfolio program and projects are necessary for business value related and binding them together. Now, how does portfolio management contribute to business value realization? Portfolio management aligns, now just look at from the portfolio point of view, aligns its components. And what are its components? Projects and programs. Independent projects and programs. Project programs and operations to the organizational strategy. So what is doing? All of these things, you know, it is putting them in the direction of the strategy, organized in a portfolio, sub-portfolio, and uh, in such a way to optimize the project and program objectives, dependencies, cost, timeline, benefit, resources, and risk. So everything orchestrated, everything properly worked out. And ensuring that this portfolio is so well organized that it will be the most effective and efficient way of doing this. So this is the responsibility of both.
this is what the portfolio is supposed to do. Uh, we, we said portfolio uh, uh, is responsible for the investment decision making. Investment decision making, careful thinking whether this money is rightly put here, rightly put there. So that talks about the efficiency and effectiveness. This allows organizations to have an overall view of how the strategic goals are reflected in the portfolio. Now your strategic goals which you establish, your portfolio is is the loudspeaker of it. It it says we are really achieving the uh, working towards those organization strategies or not. If anything is not working towards any organization, it will not invest money in that. It will invest on the other side, which is more aligned with the organization. Maybe there are 10 projects which are all feasible. All are aligned with the organization strategy. But still out of these 10, portfolio does the prioritization which is more important to the organization and I should invest only in that rather than investing in the least important project. Important means least aligned with the organization. Although that is also feasible. Although that is also aligned but not as much aligned as this one. So that, that this one has come up as uh, uh, number one on the board. So uh, this allows organizations to have an overall view of how the strategic goals are reflected in the portfolio. Institute appropriate governance management. It's a conduit of transferring the governance mechanism downwards. So the organizational governance is, I'm just only talking about the change management. I'm not talking about operations as such. So this has translated the organizational governance into portfolio management and portfolio governance and portfolio governance has given its role to the programs and project and operation and they are then further on translated downwards. So you see this how important it is not only in the strategic goals but the governance management. And then the third thing it does is authorize human, financial and material resources to be allocated based on expected performance and benefits. Priorities is set. He prioritizes the projects and programs and puts the money in the right pocket. Allocated based on expected performance and benefits which will be delivered to the organization, adding to the business value, aligned with the organization strategy. So ultimately it is putting the investment at the right place. So it was the investment decision making. What does the program do? Using program management, organizations have the ability to align its own projects, multiple projects, for optimized use through integration cost, schedule and everything, as if the program benefits are achieved. So if the program benefits are achieved, the strategy is aligned and the benefit business value would be increased. Program management focuses on project interdependencies. So he does it through controlling those interdependencies, all the project properly without any wasted, effective, efficient way of managing the interdependencies and help to determine the optimal approach for managing and realizing the desired benefit. So the crux from everything coming out is the benefit. Portfolio, larger strategy and benefit, through whatever control there is exercising, program only boss of his projects properly aligned and effectively and efficiently worked out, ultimately delivering benefit. And projects, if we know they do not deliver the benefits directly, they deliver the product, which can be translated into benefit later on. With project management, organizations have the ability to apply knowledge, processes, skills, tools and techniques. And why? that enhances the likelihood of success over a wide range of projects. Again, when you say enhances the likelihood of success, you are doing things in a specific order in the right way. If you do the things the right way, they will be effective. So the chances of its success are enhanced. Project management focuses on the successful delivery of product service result. Here we are not talking about the benefit because benefit starts from the program. Projects do not deliver any benefit. They deliver the product service or result, which can be translated into benefits later, but not in the domain of project management. 
within programs and portfolios projects are means of achieving the organizational strategy and objective it is the lowest level so this ye hamara mazdoor hai program portfolio the whole story actually the working tool is the project project is producing and contributing to the other thing organizational enablers i said these were the things which uh, in addition to project program, portfolio program and project these things are putting the house in order this was the glue of organizational project management if these structural cultural technological and human resource practices these are also looked after within the project program and portfolio naturally they come from operations so this will bind the whole thing as organization project organizations can further facilitate the alignment of these port pro portfolio program and project management activities by strengthening organizational enablers this will strengthen this is the glue which puts the pro portfolio program and project together through a binding structure strong cultural requirement proper technology human resource practices their trainings and all that their selection all that now with all this we can get the effective realization of the business plan organization can achieve successful transitions within the pro portfolio program and project domain and attain effective investment management and business value realization by continuously conducting portfolio strategic alignment and optimization performing business impact analysis and developing robust organizational enabler summary of all that we have studied at a, at a higher level so what we are doing we are continuously conducting this is the job of the portfolio to continuously you know make the right investment decisions and also keep checking the feasibility of project and program the business and uh, impact analysis and ultimately developing robust organizational enablers which will ease our life if our human resources properly trained and everything you know cultural values are put in place they are properly followed so automatically everything will go right naturally i do understand the organization enablers have essentially come from the operation but they are here to bind the organization project management into one whole so this one whole uh, if works uh, if everyone works to the proper level of effective realization the overall thing is in effective realization of the the bigger business value of the organization yahan tak ki baat clear hai everybody shahan yes sir please go ahead okay so if we have done that we have done the main chapter is almost done the only last topic is the role of the project manager uh, naturally uh, we will talk about the responsibilities and competencies of the project manager and some interpersonal skills now before that let us first talk about what kinds of managers are there in all of this so you may call any you know every organization has its own way of calling what they want to call their managers but generally speaking in a layman language there is a project manager there is a functional manager and there is a operational one right so let us forget about the project manager because we know this is the person assigned by the performing organization to lead a team that is responsible for achieving some project objective so this are specific project objective and this is a temporary team we create so project manager separate now within the operational network we have got functional manager we have got operational manager who are the operational manager and who are the functional managers first we have to decide what is the business of our organization what is the specialty of our organization what do we do so if i uh, uh, make bricks my specialization my organizational specialization is making bricks all those people involved in in production of the bricks at any level are operations people and the person who is managing them is the operational manager if you are, if you are running a hospital then doctors and nurses and all that this is your operational staff if you are running an accounting firm the people specializing in accounting you know endeavors they are the operational staff 
But you see, in addition to whatever the operation you are running, having operational staff and operational management mechanism in place, we also need to have some administrative mechanism, which includes many functions. Like you see, in a hospital, I need to have uh, the human resource person, I need to have the uh, finance person, I need to have the IT person, and so So they have got their own structure. The IT head has got a small little structure which looks after all the IT needs of the organization. The uh, human resource, you know, hires and, you know, deals with all the human resources of the organization. These are all the functions. And these functional managers, the people heading those functions, other functions, they are also necessary. But you can't simply say that an organization can run without operational staff or an organization can run without functional staff. Can an organization run without project managers? Yes, without any problems. Exactly. So, till that time, we are not doing any projects. Organization is running fine with functional to operation managers. Uh, can the organization run only with operational managers? Little difficult, you know, but you see, if uh, you are doing only the operational work and you don't have any need for any functional support, then maybe you can run it. Otherwise, it is not possible. Like, you know, when we started off with the establishment of Madra, we only have an operational thing going on. Because that was the main thing how we set up the organization, organization set up. In the organization, there was not much of a need of functional managers, and we did have some, but at a very pathetic level. You know, one odd person sitting down there, you look after the vehicle, you look after the, you know, accounts. But our operational system was large. Later on, what happened was, the operational system, and then we also, in addition to the operational system, we also had, to, because our whole work was a big project, so we had a, even larger than operation, a project management directorate. So the biggest thing in our organization then was the project management. Smaller thing was operation, and then very, very, very small thing were the functions. And then they started growing. Project started shrinking, operations started growing up, and functions started forming. And ultimately, a whole organization came into being in a stable form. But that was a very good journey in which we learned how people, you know, organizations shape up. So we need to have all three kinds of roles. Functional manager, as I said, is focused on providing the management oversight for a functional or business unit. Operational manager is responsible for ensuring the business operations are efficient. Project manager may report to a functional manager, a portfolio manager, or a program manager. So, depending upon the organization structure, having no, said, never to an operation manager. operation manager, uh, there is no oh, need for that. You see, let me tell you. If an operations manager starts a project of his own, then for the project manager, he is the functional manager. No, get my point. For the project manager of that operations, a project manager is not, uh, I mean, project is not the operation. You agree with that? So, he, he is operational manager for his operation. But for project manager, he is just a channel to communicate. So we generally call that project manager is getting resources out of him, is getting, uh, you know, uh, people allocated to him from this source. So this is generally a functional manager who provides in this. Whether he is getting it directly from the operational manager or is getting from the HR, HR will facilitate that. But if he is put under only one operational manager, that essentially means that project relates with the work of this operation only, this operational department only. But for all practical purposes, that operational manager is not commanding the project. So project manager, uh, commanding is not doing it. I mean to say that he is not, uh, the project is not part of his operation. I mean, you, 
what I understand is that if you push the product manager under the operation manager, mm -hmm. it practically becomes operations and never exactly. does not remain so, as separate as it, it has to be a separate thing. So if you want to make it separate, then project he may have administrative control over the project manager. But the, the technical work of the project will be done by the project manager. So no matter how technical the operational manager is, he is good for only his operation. But for this project, he is a functional manager. Taking example of this, in the real terms, mm -hmm. if uh, there are functional managers uh, like uh, uh, the procurement head, the finance head, the accounting head, and the engineering head, so these are the functional managers. Right. And a core functional uh, project team is working, in which one of them is a project manager. Right. Now, in these functional manager heads, mm -hmm. this project management team or, or the project leader, project manager, is working for a certain project, mm -hmm. uh, which is more or less more inclined and <coughs> centered around uh, engineering. Right. And not centered around the finance or accounting exactly. or procurement. Now, this gentleman would be reporting to the functional manager okay. of engineering. That right. is the function as so engineering function. Head. Yes. Now, where does in this entire spectrum what are the operation managers? Okay. The operation manager would be working under the engineering boss, engineering head. Uh, yes, of course. Actually, those departments like engineering and production and this and that, these are the operations. These yes, are the operations. And this was, uh, this project manager would not be uh, would not be reporting to any of those operations uh, staff or mm. operation heads, and he would be reporting to the engineering head. Not necessarily. He may, but I would say, as I as I was trying to explain, although he may be under command of our operation head, our engineering, or engineering is also a function. Engineering is also a function. Yes. So either he is reporting to him or to one specific operational manager. That only means that that operational manager is responsible for providing him the resources. He, the, the work project manager has to do by himself it is not to be, you know, directly monitored or micromonitored by whomsoever is looking at it. So, for all practical purposes, for the project manager, no matter where he is located, the relationship is of, is, a fun, is of functional nature. Like you are running your department, you know, need human resources, you ask human resources, you need money, you ask financial department. So, that is a functional deal. For project, this is a functional deal, even with the operation. And functional uh, uh, manager, can ask him, can have any kind of control. It can have full control on the project. That is called a functional organization. It can have, you know, project manager can have full control. It is called a productized organization. That way, we will study the different types of organization structure. But operationals and functions, they merge into one from the project perspective that they can. So we just call them functional. But uh, I just explained these two terms separately. Because operation managers are different from, from the functional manager in the organization. Like, you know, uh, again, uh, I would take the example of uh, army. In army, we have got fighting arms and supporting arms. The fighting arms are basically the oper operations stuff. They are the people, army is meant to fight. These are the people who actually will fight on the border. Others will be providing support to them, uniforms, weapons, food, and whatever. So all other arms are actually supporting them. Even, you know, uh, artillery is also not considered a fighting arm. It provides fire from, from sitting back there. So basically this is supporting the ground troops. So they, they all are called supporting troops. So from that point of view, all supporting are the are the functional staff and our fighting are the operation staff because the job of them is to fight. So basically the, who are the people in front, they are the operations. 
and whoever is managing it. Now, uh, look, looking at this perspective, you can have a project running under a fighting arm commander. So, how would, would that look like? That the nature of the project would be of functional nature to the, to the boss. So, we, we talked about it. Okay. PM and, and strategy, PM is responsible for satisfying the needs, which needs. Whatever the job has been assigned to him, it has task needs. But then we have to be very sensible in understanding that these things have to be done. These work has to be done by people. And people has different mentality as a group and a different mentality as a person. You might have heard about the crowd, crowd mentality. What is that? You know, people are very, you know, ill, uh, I mean, they're not very brave people. None of them can individually take a risk. But when it comes to crowd mentality, they all will kill someone. Whereas if you analyze psychologically each and every person out of them, none has courage to do that thing. But in a crowd, they will do it. Because uh, this is kind of a support group automatically established you. I am standing here and he is uh, there. So we are doing together. I am not alone doing it. So that kind of support system which is uh, spontaneous in nature. Now in organizations, we need to have developed teams which are disciplined in nature. We don't want a crowd mentality getting into the organization. We want a disciplined uh, team development where the people support each other. So teams have their own needs. Individuals have their own needs and work task has its own need. A project manager has to look at all the hierarchy. He has to fulfill the needs of all these three levels. Becomes link between strategy and the team. This is the project manager. He becomes a link between the strategy because he needs, he understands the strategic needs on top. He understands how team capability and team needs. As project management is a critical strategic discipline. This is the link which he has to establish between strategy and the people, his team who have to work. Projects are essential to the growth and survival of the organization. This is something, this sentence is so, so good. It, organizations do not realize what project is meant for. Project is to bring the change. This is necessity. Uh, yes, you can live without project as you said. Yes, we can live without project, but how long? That means you have closed the door for change. Organization will never evolve. So ultimately, like a fruit, it will decay after some time. So if you want to revive it, to Pondichani Penga Padega School. So that is the change, and that is dot always and always through a door. Projects are essential to the growth and survival of the organization. If you have to exist then you have to have this. Okay. Responsibilities and competencies of project manager, value and good practices. Projects create value in form of improved business processes, are indispensable in the development of new products and services. Naturally, I hope now we understand that if you want to produce something new, if you want to bring change, not without projects and programs not possible and make it easier for companies to respond to change in the environment competition and the market operations by itself can't compete any change has to be you know the capsule should be prepared by the project and then inherited by the operation as if it can use it as uh, as a part of its new sop revised sop and then meet the competition Project manager's role becomes increasingly strategic. Project manager, one link is always up there with the strategy. So he is hooked with the strategy. And he keeps the project hooked with the strategy. And you know, all this alignment and business value and governance and everything, this is the connection. The data connection is linked with the organization. Good practices in application of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques are not sufficient 
for effective project management. This is again a golden word to sentence. Although we said that PMBOK is a standard and standard gives us the good practices, this is as, as I, I was explaining earlier, good practices will only enable you to keep your nose out, nose out of water. It will not let you drown. Bad practices will let you drown. Good practices are just keeping you alive. Now how alive and how good? For that you have to work. You have to increase your competencies. You, as an organization you have to mature and then rise above everybody else. So only good practices will only keep you flow. You need to do more, more than the good practices. You have to go on to the best practices. So remember this sentence, good practices and application of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques are not sufficient for effective project management. You want to have effective project management, you have to do more than that. You have to be better than just good. Okay, a project manager has to develop in these three areas. Knowledge, performance and personal. Knowledge, knowledge is basically the, the, the uh, uh, theoretical knowledge about the things. Exactly, this, about the standards, about the things, about the good, what are the good practices. But performance is the experience you gain based on that knowledge. So, performance is also important. If you just study books and theories and everything, you are very good at, at that, but you have never done a project by yourself, never applied these things to your project, then you lack performance. So, we will send you back to have more experience. Right? And in addition to everything, you need to have certain personal skills developed in you, which are called soft skills like leadership, like conflict management, all those things. Although they, they are not only necessary for the project, they are necessary for all kinds of management. But in project management, they are primarily important because you are here running after the effectiveness and efficiency and you have temporary staff. Temp staff may not have any applications with you. This is only a small little time they are together. How can you engage these people? And to engage these people, you can't be, you know, a butcher or something like that. You can't be just a, a simply a bureaucratic kind of a person or an autocratic kind of a person. So you have to be one of them. So these person skills, if you are lacking in any way, the, developing them is your prime responsibility. Like, let's say you have very good knowledge of project management. You have, you know, uh, 20 years experience of running projects. But as a person, you are a very bad person. You abuse everyone who comes in front of you. Have you seen such people? There are. There are. What do you think? Is he a good project manager? People will not trust him. People will not like to work for him. So, this person has to improve on the personal level. Maybe he is not a good leader. The people who micromanage, I simply can say they are not good managers at all. The person who can't rely on his people, who can't delegate, how, what kind of a leader this person is? He is not a leader at all. He is of the, some lower grade person. But, uh, uh, Mentally, he is just a subordinate and he just wants to control things by all by himself. He, a good leader grooms leaders. A bad leader will never let anyone become a leader. Out of his team, he will ensure that nobody becomes a leader because if he becomes a leader, he must be better than So, this is very important. The personal level trainings, uh, other things, grooming yourself, howsoever, this is must. And I think uh, there are so many things nowadays available in the market. We have got books, we have got videos and everything available. You can change your personality altogether. 
you can enhance and improve and this is a continuous effort throughout your life you can keep working on that so it never ends personal growth never ends so all three areas have to be developed and there is a standard by the name of project management competency development framework competency is about people maturity is not about people maturity is about organizations organizations mature people add up to your competency and if you have got all the pmps in your organization all very competent people is your organization mature exactly there is there are some other things required to consolidate all this and put it all in, in the right direction only then organization will be able to benefit and ultimately mature so competency does you know impact the maturity of the organization but it is not the sole element which uh, adds up to find uh, to, to to reach that maturity level okay if you want you to in, enhance and improve your personal effectiveness the very first thing required is your attitude do you want to improve you understand these were the areas knowledge performance and personal have you analyzed yourself how do you analyze competency development framework is a very good tool by which you can measure yourself where you stand in what level you are in knowledge what level performance and what level personal and organizations hr department should do you know these kinds of assessment or hire consultants should these kind of assessment as if you know what your project manage manage project team skills are and where they need to develop then the person who is developing he must have an attitude to learn if you are just nominated for a course many people come to me for these kinds of training from who are allocated by the organization they just come to sleep they just want to rest this is a free time they are enjoying so i have found that the uh, people who pay from their own pocket they have some problem and they really want to do these are the people who do the pmp training the pmp certification i had a training of uh, what was that there was some ngo they funded many government departments and from those government department they have they had funded paid ngo paid for that and they were about 40 people pmp course okay wonderful none of them none of them ever thought about going for pmp they they came for resting somebody coming from gilgar jamuna oh, they were on picnic serena mein bore ho raha tha aur mazhe the unke khane jaane ye wo so exactly this is the problem even uh, very recently we conducted a diploma uh, in nest and uh, it was a three month diploma in bo bade aaram aaram se Uh, most of the people from air force senior level and middle middle level now uh, they were you know interested in learning but not for being gap shop ko matlab baatein jaate hain aur sharing of experiences this that that's it they were uh, about 50 to 60 percent was from air force about uh, 20 percent uh, people from for the youngsters who paid by the entry they were very interested pmp karne ke and there were some girls who were in the different common jobs they were also like you know well theek hai but you no know, none of them was really interested those two three boys uh, they were interested and they they keep contacting me ab kya kare aur ye air force guys you know they were good to talk about Gap shop, achi. Knowledge, bhi. Sab, sab kuch hai. just on the you know on the basis of evaluation only and having not experienced it mm -hmm. it's a very difficult thing of course of course you are absolutely right and uh, as as i was briefing you earlier uh, 
the only thing which goes against you is your experience. Oh yes, because that you have learned in many a long way. Exactly, you have to and unlearn. Then you it. Unlearn that thing, and then learn the right thing. Unlearn, learn, and then link correctly, connect it with your experience. Because you can't redo all the experience, all that twenty year or whatever experience you have. You have to relink it. The short circuiting, that's why you have to do it again. Then you can do it. And uh, you know, uh, those people who just uh, want to enjoy listening, I tell them this too. That at least, you know, don't do PMB. At least realize. Realize what is there. Yeah, exactly. And that I think, uh, that I did. I did that in that in that diploma course. That message transfer over. So that was uh, job washing, right? So there are uh, uh, these are uh, a number of interpersonal skills which a project manager must work on, and naturally, otherwise also these interpersonal skills are very important, and you must study and read about them from anywhere you can lay your hands on. Pretty, pretty. All of these are kitab mein likhi gayi hai iske upar, aap cheez ke upar, and uh, you might be, you know, Stephen kabi padha apne. जी जी आई एम सॉरी शाहान बोलिए हाँ शाहान सॉरी सर दिस टुडेज लेक्चर वाज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सर अप्रिशिएटेड व्हाटेवर यू शेयर्ड इट वाज वेरी वेरी रेलेवेंट Uh, regarding these three things you you told us that knowledge performance and personal uh, how how personally you are good at doing things uh, what my experience has been said in during 10 years uh, uh, even if you don't have a, even if you have a lesser knowledge or you have a lesser experience this personal things is more important yes if even if yes. you are in if you are in uh, in a in a in an organization where you know, multi you know cultural people are involved this this is uh, going to be playing a big role sir exactly. so i have seen people who are as you said some of them do not want to groom leaders and others uh, we see them they they want people to to grow and and do their work as well so their work will uh, they will also be relieved so yes this i have seen sir the third one the personal one exactly. this is more important than the other two mm. of course because this is uh, these are the skills which are Which you can use beyond project management, anywhere. That's that's your person. Correct, sir. One of our teacher uh, would would tell us in uh, this uh, best that project manager is one who has to wear many hats. He has to be a diplomat. He has to be a politician. He has to be a team builder, motivator, HR manager, and all this. So that that I remember this word, and I have practically seen these things. There are people who have less knowledge, but the way they they drive the whole team, the way they they lead is exemplary. I have seen people, very young young people, uh, yeah. billion dollar projects. Okay. So this this third one I would emphasize that the personal one is very. Yeah. Over the time, I have also learned uh, things from other people, from other nationalities, how yeah. they do it. Yeah. What I have seen is our neighbors. Uh, they are in um, india pakistan yeah. uh, they are more calm than 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 us yeah. we become we try to become more uh, emotional at times so we there is something sure. bad things come out when you are when you are angry or when you are not in a good mood so that we should try to uh, you know sir control so that i have seen they are uh, uh, under under stress or under um, bad circumstances how you behave this thing i have seen in in our people from our nationality most of them yeah, yeah. they our react to to exactly situations yeah. so uh, this I, is what i wanted to share i would say even even if you have got uh, a certain uh, handicap maybe you know i get angry very fast if i can correct it there is there are certain things you can't correct If I can't, I can't correct it, I can direct it in the right direction. Is that okay? I try to correct it. I try to correct it. Say I can't correct it. Then I can direct it in a in a direction. Direct your emotions 
in such a way that it uh, aligns with the strategy of strategy rather than the logon ke upar gussa utare the dushman ko sath so somehow you have to tailor it around so some attitudes are unchangeable but still ye jitni bhi cheeze hain all of these points written here i personally feel all are learnable all are learnable the only thing which is not learnable is your iq iq <laughs> is not a learnable skill is uh, this is your intelligence intelligence yes. you are born with your intelligence that is inherited wo genes mein aayi thi iq nahi padta bande ka ye eq hai sara right. emotional quotient iq the variation of iq in whole of your life will be 10 plus minus so iq kuch nahi hota there is a very short there is a short circuit between the highest iq and lowest iq if you have got a very high iq you have a tendency to get mad low iq is pagal na there is a tendency flip over so ice iq is like in 130 or something no no 130 but 172 mere hai sir kya baat kar raha hai iq to 38 or 40 matlab in unlimited pata nahi hai abhi ki range kya hai einstein was probably pata nahi 300 400 400 400 400 nobody knows ki kitna upar ja sakta hai lekin ye hai ki jo it's normally normally matlab ye bhi koi scale nahi hai 150 से ऊपर हम कहते हैं तबाही होगी और 100 एक आम आदमी से होती है 100 से ऊपर चले जाए हम कहते हैं जीनियस पैदा होगी एक आम आदमी से होती है 70 से कम जो है ना वो मेंटल कैपेबिलिटीज घटनी शुरू हो जाती है पागल बन के चला जाता है तो क्या ना 40 50 आ किसी की पागल हो और दूसरी बात ये है कि अपना नॉर्मली पीपल आर बिटवीन 70 एंड 90 एंड 100 100 नैनो में जो ही थ्री फिगर बनता है ना लोग कहते हैं जीनियस 100 पे जीनियस शुरू हो जाता है और 150 पे टॉप 2 परसेंटाइल आती है तो इस तरह से होता है ये स्टीमर में ये तरीके हैं ये जी नहीं नेट नहीं इसका देर इज अन्सा इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच गिवस दी मेंबरशिप टू टॉप टू परसेंट आई छोटे कंडक्ट टेस्ट पाकिस्तान में होते हैं टेस्ट यहाँ पर भी और आई एम द वाइस चेयर ऑफ मैंसा पाकिस्तान चेयरमैन जो है वो आता है डिसाइड करता है टेस्ट टेस्ट होते हैं तो मैं तो खैर ऑर्नामेंटल वैल्यू के तौर पे हूँ बिकॉज द प्रॉब्लम विद हाई आई क्यू इज के देर इज नो बडी ओवर द एज ऑफ आई थिंक थर्टी इन पाकिस्तान एक्सेप्ट मी एंड द चेयरमैन एवरीबडी गेट्स आउट ऑफ द कंट्री निकल जाए पाकिस्तान से निकल जाते हैं टिकता कोई नहीं है बीमारी इसकी प्रॉब्लम इसकी ये है द लेवल ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट ऑफ दो इज सो हाई दे कान टॉक टू एनी वन दे बिकम इंट्रोवर्ड्स ऑन दैट लेवल दे कान टॉक टू एनी वन सो आई नो आई जॉइन वेरी लेट आई आई डिड नॉट नो मतलब फौज में है तो हमें गिवन है कि यार एवरेज इंटेलिजेंस का ही बंदा होगा तो आई नेवर न्यू तो दैट इज जस्ट अबाउट आई थिंक टेन टेन ट्वेल्व इयर्स बैक आई वाज जस्ट सिटिंग अराउंड एयर आई हर्ड रेड फ्रॉम समवेयर इंटरनेट समथिंग मेंसा ओह मेंसा क्या होता है ये मेंसा तो देखा तो जो रिक्वेस्ट होता है अच्छा तो जो लिस्ट देखा था पाकिस्तान में भी होता है मैंने आई जस्ट सेंड एन ई मेल टू द चेयरमैन कहा होता है जैसे आप पूछ रहे हैं कहा हम तो कल आ रहे हैं बैरियर यूनिवर्सिटी में हुआ था माई ब्रदर वॉज ऑल्सो वो कैनेडा से आया हुआ था आई आज चल चलिए 
एंड ट्रस्ट मी काफी सारे लोग थे ओनली वी टू पास्ट मी एंड माई ब्रदर मतलब एग्जाम तो वो मेंबरशिप बाद में मिलती है इफ यू पास मेंबरशिप फिर ऑफर होती है मेरा वन सेवेंटी टू था भाई का वन फिफ्टी टू था और यही आप यू समझ लें कि सौ में से दो ही बंदे होते होंगे टू परसेंट तक भी बन मोटा बंदा मतलब अब रूल थोड़े से चेंज हो गए हैं अब उन्होंने क्राइटेरिया थोड़ा चेंज किया है मगर ये कि वो फिर जो फार्मूला होता है वो उतना टाइट हो गया था अभी शायद वो वन थर्टी भी देते हैं लेकिन वन थर्टी इज इक्वल टू ओल्ड वन फिफ्टी राइट फार्मूला टाइट हो गया ना उसका अब वो कहें जो मर्जी उसको अभी मैं किसी को कहूँ मेरा वन सेवन में ये क्या होता है उसके लिए कई तरीके हैं मेयर करने के तो वो छोड़ दें उसको तरीके जो भी होते हैं मगर ये है कि वो जो वन सेवेंटी टू हो सकता है आजकल के वन फिफ्टी के बराबर हो आई डोंट नो तो वो इस तरह से करते हैं वो एक्चुअली वन साइव हैविंग बोर्ड मीटिंग विद आई सजेस्ट विद के एनी बॉडी हु हाई आई क्यू ज्यादा हाई आई क्यू उन लोगों को जरा सेग्रीगेट कर लो ताकि उनको हम स्पेशल बंदोबस्त कर सकें छोटे बच्चे हैं उनकी ट्रेनिंग कराएं ऐसी जगहों को बड़ी बड़ी यूनिवर्सिटियों में कराएं जीनियस पैदा होंगे तो उन्होंने कहा कि कितने पे रखें मैंने कहा कि मेरा वन सेवन पे तो मैंने वन सेवेंटी पे रख दो उन्होंने कहा कि वन सेवन फिफ्टी से ऊपर तो आप किए और किसी का नहीं है पूरे पाकिस्तान में मैंने कहा अच्छा भाई पीछे करो इसको क्योंकि वन फिफ्टी तो सारी हैं तो उस तरह से एनी <coughs> तो ये जनाब दिस आर द एरिया एंड दे ऑल कैन बी ग्रूम एंड फॉर ग्रूमिंग दैम आई जस्ट गिव यूर हिंड देर इज अ नदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बाय द नेम ऑफ टोस्ट मास्टर्स इंटरनेशनल टोस्ट मास्टर्स इंटरनेशनल मस्ट ज्वाइन दैट दैट इज इंटरेस्टिंग In your organization or uh, UAE? Organization, sir. I am one of the members. I I attend actually the classes where which happen. They 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 promote leadership qualities and uh, you know leadership public speaking. Mostly. And communications. Yes, sir. Yes. Karachi, Pakistan, is three or four. Lahore, me, be two or three. इस्लामाबाद में भी दो सर जाए जाए अटेंड करें मजा आएगा नो वुड यू टीच एनी थिंग बट यू ग्रूम बोथ इन लीडरशिप एंड कम्युनिकेशन बाय डूइंग एवरीथिंग बाय डूइंग इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग एनी वेज मैं आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक मोर टाइम ऑन इट बट अब ये दो चीजें जो लीडरशिप एंड कम्युनिकेशन ये तो सर आपको वहां से मिल जाएंगी यू डू कमिट स्पीचेस एंड यू डू मेनी रोल्स यू हैव नो लीडरशिप क्वालिटीज बनानी पड़ती हैं शो करनी पड़ती हैं दे हैव बुकलेट्स दे इशू यू टू बुकलेट्स वन ऑफ लीडरशिप एंड वन ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन बोथ विल हैव टेन चैप्टर्स ईच एंड ऑन योर ओन टाइम यू हैव टू कम्प्लीट those ten ten projects ten in communication ten in this if you complete the communication ten pro, uh, projects you become competent communicator certified competent communi- communicator if you complete ten chapters of leadership you become competent leader and then you go to next step another ten projects another ten projects so you keep going till the highest level is distinguished toast master dtm you can become that i have seen myself we established the first chapter in islamabad i have with my own eyes i have seen a person who could not speak a single word in front of audience after 6 months he was leading his company's presentation bol nahi sakta tha abhi bhi hai abhi bhi exist karta hai अभी भी आता है मेरे पास बोला नहीं जाता था लेकिन नीयत उसकी इतनी सख्त थी कि भले बेचती हो भले जो मर्जी हो आके खड़े जरूर होना 
नीयत थी एटीच्यूड की बात की थी ना एटीच्यूड था सीखने का उन्हें कहा जितनी चिपेड़े पड़ती हैं पढ़े हैं लेकिन मैंने तो करके जाना फ्लूंट हो गए थे जबरदस्त देवर टू थ्री पीपल जो वो थे थे जी साइकोलॉजिकल है थता पंचरो साइकोलॉजिकल है आई दे वाज वन ऑफ माय क्लास फेलोस वो थता था अभी भी है पर दो काम आप उससे करवा लें उसकी जरा सा गलती नहीं होगी एक तो वो डिबेटर था सर क्लास का बेहतरीन डिबेटर जब डिबेट करता था कोई थत्था नहीं था और गाने गाता था जब गाना गाता था तो क्या खूबसूरत गाना गाता था तो यही यही होता था तुम लोग वो एक्चुअली होता है साइकोलॉजिकल है जब उनको वो अपनी मर्जी के मोड में आ जाते हैं ना तो फिर वो फ्लो में आ जाते हैं जब बातचीत कर रहे होते हैं तो वो डर डर के कर रहे होते उसमें कब कब बात ही होती है दिस इज जस्ट साइकोलॉजिकल और इसका इलाज वो जनाब उधर ठीक ठाक होकर निकले हैं लोग तो अमेरिका में है उसका है वो इंटरनेशनल की साइड पे जाए आप वहाँ पे मिलेगा मैं मैं इसे छोड़े हुए भी दस पंद्रह साल बारह साल हो गए मैं उसके साथ भी इतना कनेक्टेड हूँ तो लोकल भी अभी नहीं पता कि कहाँ है but uh, i keep referring people people keep doing their <laughs> they keep coming back ji bada maza aaya bada fayda hua even jab wahan bhi jayenge na you will have you will have those master national there jidhar bhi jayenge aap is everywhere like pmi chapter post master you must join them or enjoy karein right ji um, okay in the an appendix there uh, appendix x3 this will give you a little detail about each one of these topics you read through that yourself and uh, uh, that uh, you know i have although i have provided the slides for everything leadership one two two slides team building four slides motivation two slides and so on all of these things are covered i just made the points out of it and put it there but this you, this is your personal study you read them and understand them these are the interpersonal skills we require but as far as project management is concerned we will move on in the second chapter from tomorrow onwards this is it conflict coaching that's it ji any questions shaha No sir, today's lecture was very interesting, sir. There was a lot of gap in between. That's why it got interesting. Very, <laughs> very. <laughs> well, I think now we are going to the core. Uh, yeah, yeah. Subjects. You, you will enjoy more and more every chapter. Two, three, four, yes, five, sir. six will be very hot. Or मजा आएगा. उसके बाद फिर पारा नीचे आना शुरू हो जाएगा थोड़ा. इनशाला